Hey guys, I'm Jordan and you're watching Fixbook. After watching this video, your car problems stand about as much a chance as this laptop does against my hot lid. Now, make sure you stay tuned so you can see what happened to the laptop at the end of this video. And as always, don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment down below. So today I'm going to be showing you how to change your oil and this is one of my videos that I've chosen to redo out of the original videos that I did about three years ago and if you'd like check out the original and let me know if you think I've improved or let me know what you think. There will be a link down below in the video description and there will also be an annotation link up in the video. So check it out. Let me know what you think. Alright guys and what you'll need for today's project is a 14 or 17 millimeter socket. A 3 8 extension with a 3 8 ratchet. Also, a 17 millimeter or 14 millimeter combination wrench could replace these two. You also need an oil filter removal tool. You can also use a Phillips head screwdriver and a hammer, hammer it in there, and then turn the oil filter left. That's one way to do it. It's a real messy way to do it, but that's one way to do it. You'll also need something to lift your car, including a jack and a jack stand, or rhino ramps work just as well. And you'll also need an oil pin to catch the oil and you'll want to drain your oil into some kind of container or you can take the pin itself to like an AutoZone or Advanced where they'll recycle the oil for you. And you'll also need a, approximately five quarts of brand new motor oil and a new oil filter as well. And you'll also need some clean paper towels or rags. Now the first thing you want to do is go ahead and get your car warmed up. You want to get your car warmed up so your oil drains out like water instead of honey on a cold day. The next thing you want to do is go ahead and pop the hood and make sure it will lift up. You don't want to drain your oil first and then realize that you can't lift the hood up. Now another good habit to keep when changing your oil is to go ahead and take your cap off. And guys this is for if you're changing the oil inside like in a garage because if you're outside it's windy maybe raining, maybe blowing leaves, you could get stuff in there and you definitely don't want to do that. But go ahead and take off your oil cap and set it right here where your hood will shut down and latch because that will make sure you don't shut the hood without putting the cap back on and also it will remind you make sure you put oil in the car too. Now it's time to lift the car. And before I go any further, I'd like to thank Eric the Car Guy. He inspired some of the information that I've provided in this video because I watched his 20 minute oil change video right before I did this one. So there will be a link in the video description below and also an annotation link up now to check out his oil change video and his channel. Now there's a few ways we can do this. I've just kind of zoomed in here on this little piece that's used for towing right here. You can jack up on that piece right there. and. If we're going to be using a jack, you need to make sure you use a jack stand like that. Another option we have is to go ahead and use the rhino ramps. With the rhino ramps, what you want to do is just make sure you go ahead and get that wheel completely centered right in the beginning of this piece and drive up. Okay guys, now there's one other option when we're talking about lifting the car. We can pull the car up on a curb or sidewalk. Now, Eric the car guy kind of advised against this, but I'm here to tell you it works just fine. You just might look a little funny, so it's an option if you live in an apartment or townhouse. I'm, I myself live in a townhouse. I own a townhouse at such a young age. Think, thanks be to God the Father of Jesus who is my Lord. And when I do my own oil changes, I go ahead and just pull the car right up on the sidewalk and it works just fine and again you just don't have to pull out the jack and jack sense it's convenient so that's another option for you guys who live in an apartment or townhouse and just make sure to follow the rules and guidelines of your apartment complex or a homeowner's association I don't want you guys out there breaking any rules so just keep that in mind and that's another option now that you've got your car lifted up we're gonna go ahead and grab our oil changing tools get your bucket there and we're going to go underneath the car. Now, before we get too crazy here, I want to show you something so you don't drain the wrong fluid. This, this is your engine. This, this is the front of your engine. There's belts and whatnot there. If there's belts and stuff up here, then and it's going this way, then you have a rear wheel drive. You'll, it'll look like this if you have a front wheel drive. Now, if you have a front wheel drive and you're looking at it like I am, you're going to find another piece connected to the engine okay so we're gonna we're looking at it close see that now I'm backing up now now look 
the engine cuts off here and the transmission begins down there. So the transmission is from here to, he to here. And the engine is from here to here. And the same thing is going to occur if you have a rear wheel drive car. It's going to be going that way and there will be a separation point. Now, follow me under the car and we'll look at the two pans here. So here we are and we're now underneath the car about to drain our oil but first I want you to see something here. Here we have our oil pan. Yes, so there's a pan right there and there's a bolt right there. You don't want to take that bolt out unless you want to change your automatic transmission fluid or drain and refill, whatever. You want to come over to this pan with the oil filter by it and change that one. And sometimes they'll even say engine oil here just to help people. So now that we've got that straight, we'll go ahead and drain your engine oil. Now, we're going to drain your engine oil. Make sure that your drain pan is positioned in such a way that it's going to capture the oil. And on most of these, it's going to be a 14 millimeter drain plug if it's coming right off the, the car, if it's the stock drain plug. But a lot of times when you go to buy an aftermarket plug, it's going to come in 17 millimeter. So it's a safe bet to take a 14 millimeter and a 17 millimeter socket or wrench down there with you to remove your drain plug. So just like that, we're gonna let it drain. Also guys, now's a good time to tell you about this gasket right here. If you see some oil dripping, you may wanna replace the, the drain plug gasket. When I worked at the Toyota dealership and did oil changes there, they changed the gasket every oil change. So they're not that expensive, it's only like, probably like 50 cents or so if you can even buy them just one at a time but I know the drain plug itself is about a dollar to two dollars at uh, AutoZone or Advance and it's not a bad idea to replace it every once in a while and you'll actually probably have to replace this guy if it came out kinda tough or if you go to put it back in and it's going to kind of cut tough. These guys uh, do get cross threaded and the threads mess up quite often so it's it's not a common problem. Just make sure you replace it and don't keep putting it back in there. Now I'm going to show you how to change the oil filter. Okay guys, so to change this oil filter, what I'm going to do is if it was done right last time, I should just be able to twist it off and I haven't tried yet so we'll be finding out together as I give it a twist here. Oh, seems like it's all in there pretty good and I can't get that one off with my hands so I'm gonna grab my little oil filter remover tool I've got and there's a few of them like I mentioned in the beginning of the video but I'm gonna use this claw type I'm just gonna reach in and you'll see how this guy works it's pretty neat it only goes the one way it only spins left so I'll just go ahead and put this guy on here and we're gonna let the loosen them on out so he just grabs and he he just grabs them with the the death grip the tighter you you spin the tighter he grabs. So it's a pretty cool little thing there. And I'm gonna go ahead and just spin it like that and then that'll start draining. Notice I didn't keep my hand there. I don't wanna be real oily. So we'll let that drip for a little while and once it's all about out, I'll go ahead and grab it there with a paper towel and I'll, I'll kind of flip it over so we don't get oil everywhere and all the oil will go in the drain pan. All right guys, so our oil filter has had plenty of time to kind of drain all the way. I'm gonna take a rag and just kind of go ahead and begin it, removing it all the way and right now is a perfect time to go ahead and put that drain plug back in while you're waiting on the oil filter to drain all the way. I put it back in back there but that's the best time really is when the oil filter is draining so I'm just going to take it like this right here. I'm going to be very careful. I'm just going to come down and have them face down here so that all the oil just kind of dumps out in the pan. I'm just going to set them right there in the pan and look at my hands. My hands are still clean and you want to make sure the surface here is nice and cleaned off. We can see it's pretty clean but you want to make sure not the least bit of gasket stays on there. Uh, oftentimes like the whole old oil filter gasket will stay on there and uh, people will double gasket it and they'll get driving about a mile down the road and then the all oil pressure will disappear and next thing you know you'll be a bunch of knocking and clanking. So you want to make sure you don't do that. Okay guys, so we've got our new oil 
filter here. We got a perlator filter, and I like to use the more expensive oil filters. And by the way, I'm just dipping my hand in the old oil. See, it's not too terribly dirty, so I'll take that and rub that right around the new gasket, which is gonna help it seal better. It's gonna help it go on easier, and it's not gonna get stuck when you're trying to put it on. So we're just gonna lube it up there just like I did. And like I was saying with the perlator oil filter, you, you know you're getting a good oil filter, and it's not like, they're paying me to do advertising or anything but when I was in school we cut apart a lot of these oil filters and Fram and other cheap oil filters use plastic components inside the oil filter we cut into this little tin thing right here and perlator and like Bosch and other expensive ones but perlator is the cheapest of them and Motocraft is another good one they use all metal components and they're just put together better so I'd stick with one of those try to stay away from Fram even even the Fram tough guard I'd be a little weird about so we're gonna go ahead and just put that on there just like that and when you get it tight here for the next time you don't want it to be so tight you're just gonna kinda put it on there twist it just snug it down and then just with your hand just one more just like that will be just fine I'm just gonna maybe even just a little bit more so nice and snug hand tight Definitely never want to take like an oil filter wrench or anything to tighten it up. That's that's a big no-no. You don't want to do that. So the next time you go to change it, you'll just be able to take it off with your hand, which is desirable. That's what you want to be able to do. Now we're going to take our drain plug and hopefully you've cleaned it off like I have. And we're going to go ahead and just stick it back in there. Oh, and by the way, if there is any stuff just dripping here, go ahead and take a clean rag and just kind of wipe it away. And we shouldn't be dripping more after we get this guy in there and like I said go ahead and get you a new drain plug gasket or drain plug altogether now I'm gonna take my ratchet and 14 millimeter socket you can also take a, a combination wrench they work just well and that's what I normally like to use I just happen to grab the ratchet and socket today we're gonna go on here and we've snugged it with our hand and I'm just gonna snug it down with the ratchet that's snug then I'm gonna do what I like to call half a quarter turn just barely not half a half a quarter turn how about that just barely snug it down it's not a what I like to call a load bearing part it's not being spun around or anything all it's doing is just sticking in there and it's holding the fluid in there so it's not going to cause you too much trouble so just make sure it's tight if you do it too tight you just you don't want to cause problems in this area you'll you'll strip stuff and uh, just make it harder on yourself you don't want to make life harder than it already is so I'm just going to wipe it down after all that and now we're ready to put the new oil in okay guys now it's time to get your car on level ground and refill your engine with new engine oil all right so it's finally time to put our new engine oil in first thing i like to do is go ahead and grab this engine oil dipstick i'll just wipe it off clean and set it off to the side here so i can check the oil as soon as i put the new oil in then the next thing i'll do is i'll grab my new engine oil and let's see we've got pins oil here and I like pins oil. There's a couple of reasons I like them all. One, they're pretty affordable. And two, I think they add some good detergents to their oil. And I'm going to be real careful here. I'm probably going to make a ginormous mess because I'm, I'm so far from the thing here. But we will see. You can laugh. I'm not going to... Oh, yep. I'm missing. I'm not missing. There we go. I got it in there. And the main thing you guys need to know about... Oh man, this is rough. About engine oil is the API standard. There is an S and a letter on the back. And by the way, guys, there's a better way to do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you. Oh no, I'm laughing, I'm laughing. <laughs> oh guys, oh goodness. Okay, so there's a better way to do this, and I'm gonna show you. Oh man, so much concentration required right now. And I need about four quarts. Oh, I'm going off. Oh, I'm going too much. <laughs> oh, if you guys can only see the hole. I wonder if you can see the exact hole I'm shooting for here. I think I'm doing okay for for what I'm working with. But anyways, the other the reasons I like pins oil is because it has some good detergents, like I said, and it is affordable. You really want to get the just the most affordable engine oil as long as it is up to the up to par with the API standard. It used to be in the olden days that the standards for oil and the properties of what the oil did were all over the place. So 
buying an expensive oil was the way to go because they had the best standards and the oil qualities did the best things. But now it's monitored by the API and all the standards have to be within spec. And as long as it's on the latest letter, the API standard, you'll, I'll show you the letter here in just a moment. As long as it's on that latest letter, it's, it's going to be good oil. The only difference is they can put some different detergents in. And like I said, I like Penn's oil. They do pretty well with uh, the detergents they put in there, I believe, and they're affordable. So that's why I really like Penn's oil. I mean, you can also go as cheap as Supertech. They, they stay up with the same standard, but... I think Penzoil does better detergents than them. So those are just a few words about oil. And I think I've got just about all of it in there. And now I'll show you that standard I was talking about there on the on the back of the oil container you can look for. Oh, and before I show you the API standard, I just wanted to, let's, let's see how much I under or overfilled it. Um, let's see, it's okay. So right now it's shown a little above and I'm gonna try and get a good shot of you of it here for you. Let's see. Right there. So, if we can just get the light shining off that thing. Well, it's not cooperating, but if you look at my finger, it's about right there. Now, once I turn the car on, the oil filter is going to absorb some of that, so it's probably going to go right there. So, I probably need to add in about another quart, but I'm going to start it up and then take a look and see what the level's at then. And don't forget to put your oil cap on before you start your car. Now, I started the car up just briefly, which is all you really need. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to clear them there. And we'll go ahead and put them back on and read the fresh level. Let's see what we've got. And it only took, it just took it down not a whole lot really. I'm going to, I'll get a close up here and I don't know if I'll be able to get the, light to reflect off the fluid I wasn't able to the first time I don't I don't guess I won't be able to this time either so there we'll get nice and close oh I have almost got it as you can see it's just below that little dot so I just need to add a hair not quite a a full half a quart there like I was saying so we'll just add a little bit of fluid and once we've done that we're pretty much done with our oil change but a few more words here in just a moment all right, so now we're looking at our cap. And this is what you're gonna wanna follow when you go to choose your oil. You wanna choose what it says there. And unless your car is really old, you really wanna stick with that 5W30. And some of the older cars that I have, I'll put like 10W30 or 10W40 to kinda help a, a oil leak maybe. But you really do that at your own risk because the oil pickup screen, there's a, there's a screen that you're your oil pump uses this little tube with a screen on the end and if it's too thick you're gonna starve your engine oil and destroy your engine so I do that at my own risk I've I've done as much as 20 W50 in my Civic uh, during the winter it's it's crazy but the Civic survived but do that at your own risk uh, but you're gonna wanna do what the number says right here and we've got an API standard now notice it says API SL I'm gonna turn around and we're gonna have a look at this bottle right here API service SN. All right, and like I was telling you earlier, we got the API service and it says SN. Now what the S means is spark ignited. There, the other standard, if I'm not mistaken, I'm recalling from memory here, it should be C and then a letter, which is combustion ignited. So if it's SN, that's that's the standard for spark ignited, which is gonna be your gas car, and C, C plus a letter will be the diesel specification. So as long as you have an API service, of N or greater, and this is if you're changing your oil today or past 2013, N is going to be the best. The oil is going to operate under hot and cold conditions um, perfectly to the specifications of N. So you can't really do better than N. It's funny because when I originally made the video that I'm redoing right here, I had looked at Royal Purple, which was like $8 a quart or something, and then I looked at the Mobile One, which is like 3 or $4 a quart. And the Royal Purple was actually behind on a letter. So it's mind-baffling that they could charge more. If people only knew about the API standard, they would be like, oh, I'm not buying that trash. <laughs> not, not to trash, not to be too harsh with the Royal Purple, but that's uh, just one of the things there. So... Really, as long as your oil has this standard, 
in or later and you can look at all of them they'll all normally be right right in line with the same standard if you get that you can get the cheapest oil you want really as long as it has the standard here and like I said before the only thing that really differs is the detergents that they add like let's see if we we got it here it says uh, cleansing agents active okay so some some of these oils carry like like a detergent within the oil that can help your engine and it's beneficial in that sort of way. That's about the only benefit in like the high mileage. It'll kind of do the same thing. It'll put some additives in there to just kind of make things go as best as they can for that older engine. So that's pretty much all I've got to say about the oil. Now one last thing I'm going to go over is you want to kind of maintain everything while you're here under your hood and you're changing your oil. It's really the time to check up on everything and make sure your car is good to go because this is your kind of like once a month. Well, I say that because I'm a delivery driver and I have to change my oil once a month. But your once a once a three or four month checkup, you you want to go over a few certain things, which I'm gonna tell you about here in just a second. All right, so like I was saying, uh, checking the fluids and stuff at a at a shop or a dealership. A lot of times, this is the time it'll take to refill all your fluids. So just go check your windshield washer fluid. Just top that off. Your let's see, what is this, power steering probably? Yeah, power steering fluid. Uh, we got your brake fluid over there, uh, automatic transmission fluid, there's a procedure you need to go through for most different cars to check your automatic transmission fluid. You can check out uh, some of the videos I have for checking automatic transmission fluid. Just type in uh, in the search bar Fixbook Transmission or ATF, Fixbook ATF, and you should be able to find most of my automatic transmission fluid procedures. We also have coolant. The best way to check coolant is when your car cools all the way down, and my car probably has by now, you're going to go ahead and just push down on your cap here, the cap with the pressure, and I'm going to let off slowly, and we're just going to look. And as long as it's full all the way to the top there, then you're really good to go. You do want to check the coolant reservoir as well and just kind of top off what's what you got going on in there and then another thing that really gets overlooked most of the time is the battery you want to check the water level in your battery and I'll bring you over here and we'll just take a flathead screwdriver or a pair of keys because that's what I have in my pocket and I'm just gonna kind of move this out of the way and, but you're just gonna wedge under there like that and there we go and we'll check and you want to make sure that the water is pretty much all the way at the top a lot of times you'll see some of the things there lower than the others take some distilled water not tap water distilled water and just fill them all up till they're level and that'll also keep you from getting stuck on the side of the road or uh, stuck with a no start in the cold because during the cold season is uh, most time when the batteries are going to fail so that's a brief check over you can do when you change your oil there you go, it just snaps back in like that. And of course your air filter. Uh, I mean, I could probably just axes. I don't know if you guys can see. Let me double check on that. Nope, you don't even know what I'm talking about. Let's see. There we go. So, I just, you know, just pop those guys off right there. Just lift up, uh, check your air filter. Just pull it out. You don't want any, that doesn't look too terrible. The rule of thumb at one of the places I used to work was if you hit it, and stuff comes flying out all over the place it's time to change it if you hit it nothing really comes out you check you don't see really see anything stuck there in those fins then it's probably good to go I'd say every other oil change you want to replace your air filter so maybe once or twice a year really once a year you should be good and that's pretty much it so other than that what you want to do is after you start your car just let it run for a minute make sure there's nothing dripping uh, make sure you wipe everything down so you make sure you don't drive off and uh, you forgot to put the drain plug, plug in and you spew out all the oil. You don't want anything like that. You don't want a, a catastrophe from your oil change. So that's pretty much it um, for today's video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching guys and don't forget to subscribe so you can catch all my new videos which publish Mondays and Fridays at 11 a.m. Pacific Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Time and I will see you then.